The business of weather forecasting is increasingly precise and competitive as consumers expect more targeted, hyper-local forecasts, and businesses require them, too. That comes despite cuts to key government agencies by the Trump administration. And joining us right now is Tom Weber. He's the author of a book called Cloud Warriors, Deadly Storms, Climate Chaos, and the Pioneers Creating a Revolution in Weather Forecasting. Full disclosure, Tom's been a friend of mine for over 30 years. We used to be reporters together at the Wall Street Journal covering the Internet. And, Tom, it's really great to have you in today. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks. I, I think back to the early days when I knew you and your fascination with all things related to tornadoes. You wanted to basically recreate the movie Twister and go chase tornadoes around Oklahoma, which you eventually did. Yes. I, I mean, I think like a lot of people, I've always been fascinated by the weather. Um, and one of my goals, uh, you, you might remember our editor at the time would not sign off on my expense report to go storm chasing. Uh, that was like 30 years ago. So in doing this book, I finally realized my, my dream of going storm chasing in Oklahoma, um, which was a blast. Uh, it is very exciting when you get to the edge of these storms and the hail is just pummeling the vehicle. Um, but in addition to being kind of exciting and cool, it was an opportunity for me to see why researchers go on these storm chases and the type of data that they're collecting, uh, which is all aimed at improving our ability to predict tornadoes and issue better warnings. Uh, and the thing, I was with NOAA's top storm chaser, and we're basically driving around in a mobile weather station that is collecting data uh, as it drives into the edge of the storm. So uh, that was a, a, it took 30 years, but I finally got my, my storm chase. As somebody who used to live in Oklahoma and we hid from these things, I think you're nuts. But let's talk a little <laughs> bit about the book and why you did this with what businesses are doing right now. You had an excerpt in the Wall Street Journal recently and it focused on drone deliveries. It's the new wave. It's coming with Amazon and so many other companies. I never thought about the idea of how important weather forecasting was on a hyper-local basis for them. It, it can basically shut them down if there's a storm that comes up. So I, you know, what I wanted to understand uh, in doing my research was how good weather forecasting has gotten and where the cutting edge is. And I really started to think about forecast information as weather intelligence. And businesses want good intelligence, and if you know how to put it to work, it's very valuable. Hyperlocal forecasting, uh, you know, may be the most cutting edge area of everything that's happening in meteorology. And it's just what it sounds like. Hyperlocal means the forecast is down to the level of a few blocks. Uh, your typical weather forecast covers a city, or a zip code, or a region. Uh, these are very specialized forecasts that zoom into tight to small areas, and they're helping enable important emerging industries. Drones, you mentioned, are ones. Uh, drone operators, uh, if they want to do delivery services or other operations, they need to know what the wind is like at 1,000 feet. If you are sending a drone upwind, uh, you're eating up your battery faster. So everything you do, you know, if, if you think of flying your own drone in my backyard like I do, it's not that big a deal. If you're trying to operate a fleet of drones and scale up and be more efficient, you really need that weather information. Yeah. I thought it was already so complex. I'm stunned at how much more complicated it is than I even thought it was going to be. Yeah, and it, it's amazing to be able to predict the weather down to a few blocks, but we're starting to get there. What's the, the economics of, of just the, the weather industry? Like, are people investing in the weather industry? Are there lots of private companies that people are engaged in? What does that look like? The, the business element of weather forecasting is amazing. I spent some time with undergraduate students at Penn State uh, who are headed into the meteorology world. 20 years ago, they'd all be headed to television or the National Weather Service. These days, a lot of them are looking at jobs in business. And, you know, your viewers, I think, would be familiar with how important forecasting is for things like insurance right. or agriculture. Um, but there's a lot of other companies that I think people don't realize are, are looking closely at the weather. I spent some time at an electric utility uh, in Southern California 
that has stood up this incredible in-house weather forecasting operation with meteorologists. They have their own uh, weather sensors dotting their coverage area. They even have a specialized computer model, and it's all to predict wildfire conditions because uh, utilities right. in California need to know. How much are these companies spending on this kind of stuff? I mean, these, this team, for example, and all the sensors and... It's, uh, I don't know the budget at that utility. I can tell you, overall in the U.S., it's a relatively small amount of money for what we get. The fiscal 2024 budget for NOAA, which includes the Weather Service, but all of NOAA, was $6.3 billion. Uh, there's been talk this year of trying to cut that budget in half, uh, which is pretty drastic. Um, but uh, what you see a lot of companies doing is just bringing in one or two weather experts who can use all the forecast data that's out there, but turn it into decision-based information for the rest of their management team. 